Hey. Hi. Welcome to Florida Bay. This is actually the lowest, the saltiest, and the wettest habitat of the Everglades. So Florida Bay is where the fresh water ends up meeting the salt water. So what do you think? It's beautiful here. And I really love that you can smell the salty water from the bay. But I don't really understand how Florida Bay is part of the Everglades ecosystem. Well, do you remember the River of Grass? Yeah. You know the fresh water that oozes through the sawgrass prairies, down through the deeper sloughs? Where do you think it ends up going? It empties into Florida Bay? Right. It also empties into the Gulf of Mexico to the west side of Florida Bay. And don't forget that the water flow of the Everglades is not completely natural. Florida Bay does not receive as much fresh water today as what it once did a hundred years ago. We are standing right now where the Florida mainland dissolves out into Florida Bay. The limestone foundation underneath the Everglades actually drops right around four to five feet underneath this water to create Florida Bay, which is a huge shallow basin of brackish to salty water. Florida Bay extends all the way down south to the Florida Keys. And it's so shallow, we could actually walk all the way whoa. down to the Florida Keys if it, whoa, 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 except for the mud. Florida Bay is covered with this really soft mud. It's like powdered sugar. Florida Bay is home to the American crocodile, so we really don't recommend swimming either. So the best way to explore Florida Bay is by boat. Out here on Florida Bay, below our canoe, you can end up seeing things like sawfish, jellyfish, sharks, You can also see species of fish like redfish, tarpon, snook, snapper. We can even see dolphin too, if you keep your eyes open for it. So one thing to keep in mind about the salinity level of Florida Bay is that it fluctuates, especially in comparison to the ocean, which typically sticks around 35 parts per thousand. Florida Bay fluctuates between 5 and up to 75 parts per thousand, and all based upon the wet and dry season. So in the wet season, with all the water, the salinity level will actually decrease, whereas during the dry season, the salinity level of Florida Bay will increase. I get it. So if you add fresh water into the salty system, it dilutes it. It's probably pretty salty right now at the peak of the dry season. Ooh, that's really salty. It doesn't taste very good. What we're paddling alongside is an island that we call a key. And Florida Bay has over a hundred of these keys. In each one of these keys, the limestone is just a little bit higher here in elevation than an area around it. And each one of these keys are ringed with the mangrove trees which provide excellent nesting as well as roosting sites for animals like the bald eagle and the endangered wood stork. Here we are approaching a mudfly. Florida Bay is made up of all these ridges and valleys and Florida Bay also has strong low and high tides and during the low tides 
All the water drains away from these ridges, exposing things like worms, crabs, stranded fish, and other food sources. And all these different wading birds like roseate spoonbills and snowy egrets and great egrets end up rushing out onto these mud flats to feast on all this newly exposed food. This cycle happens twice a day. The water rushes out and then rushes right back in with the high and low tides. Right now below our canoe is one of the most fascinating submerged homes in the Everglades. It is often overlooked as fishing boats zoom over it. Unfortunately, many careless boaters damage this home with the propellers from these boats. What is he talking about? I'm talking about seagrasses. And the bottom of Florida Bay is covered with beds of seagrasses. And there's four different kinds. There's manatee grass, shoal grass, widgeon grass, and turtle grass. Is seagrass the same thing as seaweed? No. Actually, most seagrasses are really insulted whenever you call them seaweed. Seaweed is a primitive algae, whereas sea grasses are more advanced flowering plants. Sea grasses need certain conditions in order to be happy, you know, like warm, shallow, tropical, or subtropical waters, and clear water to allow sunlight to penetrate. Sea grass is also a producer, just like periphyton. What do you think are the seagrass consumers? You said turtle grass was one of the varieties, right? So sea turtles are one of the consumers. Yeah, exactly. Seagrass consumers range from sea turtles to tiny snails to even 2,000 pound manatees that eat the blades of this grass. And it's no surprise that manatees are nicknamed sea cows. Many other creatures end up grazing on the marine algae that are also growing on the seagrass. The seagrass home is a key nursery for juvenile fish, shrimp, crabs, and even lobster. Another really cool home in Florida Bay is the hard bottom community of sponges, sea fans, and algae. It occurs on limestone rock by the shore. But time is running short. We better get back to the mainland. Otherwise, we might get stranded out here during low tide. Thank you so much. I had an amazing day. I think now I'm ready to go take everything in and do some of my own exploring. All right, thanks again. You're welcome. Take care. Yeah, the Ospreys landed. <laughs>